Good day, and welcome to today's webinar, The Essentials of NFV and SDN for Carriers and Service Providers. The audio for this conference is streamed through your computer speakers, and if you're having any difficulties, please let us know through the Q&A window. We invite you to submit questions throughout the presentation by typing them in the Q&A window. And hitting submit. All questions are private and only our panel will see the questions. And any that we don't get to during the webinar will be addressed offline following the event. And also, please take advantage of the resources at the bottom of the console screen where we've posted some useful documents and information for your reference, including our ebook, NFV and SDN Guide for Carriers and Service Providers. I'd like to take a quick moment to introduce you to today's speakers, Kevin Wade and Abel Tong. Kevin is Senior Director of Product Marketing for Sienna's Blue Planet software portfolio. In this role, Kevin is responsible for leading the Blue Planet product marketing team, as well as for driving the creation of programs to drive market awareness and market share for Sienna's industry-leading SDN NFV orchestration, analytics, and management software solutions. And Abel is Senior Director of Solutions Marketing for Sienna's Blue Planet division. He's responsible for helping transform networks through the application of software-defined networking, SDN, and network function virtualization, or NFV, to deliver value and create new services and to simplify network operations for Sienna's customers. And now, without further delay, I'll turn the event over to you, Kevin. Thank you very much, Joanna, and, and uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening to all of the uh, attendees this morning. Uh, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you again for attending this uh, webinar where we'll talk about some strategic technologies that are uh, that uh, you know provide value in, in different ways to service providers. So the, the topic of course of today's webinar is NFV and SDN Essentials for Service Providers. Uh, myself and Abel will share what we hope will be some in, insightful information about these technologies uh, and um, Without further ado, I'll just get started. A quick look at the agenda for the webinar. Uh, I will begin by uh, highlighting some uh, aspects of SDN, or Software Defined Networking, followed by an overview of NFV technology, Network Functions Virtualization. From there, I will talk about what we describe here as virtual network building blocks. And, and that really will indicate how these technologies, SDN and NFV and others, can be combined like building blocks to, uh, for uh, service providers specifically. Uh, following that, I will, I will hand the, the ball, so to speak, over to Abel, who will walk through some real-world success stories of service providers and carriers who have deployed these technologies and others. And then we will close, um, followed by a Q&A session, an interactive QA, I should say, We'll, uh, Abel and I will be answering the questions that you'll be able to submit uh, through the console here. So first, I will dive into SDN. So uh, just to provide a little uh, little background on uh, at what SDN is and, and uh, how it's used. So you know, SDN is is generally recognized as the the, the technology or or movement or concept that got network virtualization started. And the origination of, of SDN it can really be traced back to what was called the Clean Slate Project that was initiated um, from uh, some you know, folks in the academia world out of Stanford and, uh, and Berkeley, folks like Nick McCown and, and Guru Parul Kar really came up with this concept of SDN that had three separate and um, you know, but related tenets. The first of these, and, and, and they're, you know, really highlighted in the, the diagram to the right there that um, was, you know, many of you I'm sure recognize that came out of an organization called the ONF, when, right, when SDN was being initially defined. The three tenets that, uh, that came out of that movement were, first and foremost, the separation of what's called the control plane and the data plane. Essentially, the, uh, the software fabric that, that can uh, enable uh, management or abstracted management of the, the, uh, the network completely separate from the forwarding plane or, or the traffic. Uh, that you know, separation it really uh, develops or, or, or 
or is realized in a or I'm sorry, uh, realizes logically centralized intelligence and control. That's that the control layer shown on the on the diagram. And then another important aspect of it is an open northbound API to enable programmability and uh, access in, a, in an open way uh, to uh, different applications and higher level higher higher level orchestrators. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later. You know, moving on. So that that you know, uh, as I mentioned, that. Uh, uh, Initial technology was came out of the academia, but it was very quickly uh, embraced by the the service provider world. And if if I were to to really highlight what value SDN provides uh, for service providers at the at the, the top level, it's really all about a more responsive physical network. And um, that concept of a, a log logically centralized, uh, you know, and intelligent control. Plane is 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 uh, uh, built out in the concept of what we're showing here in the diagram of an SDN controller. That is the, the principal component of SDN, and and it is the element of the the architecture that provides that that very tight control of the underlying network elements, the traffic, and the services that run across that. And th that can be multiple layers of the the physical network as well as multiple segments of the physical network, starting from, from access to metro and through the core and all the way out uh, the other side again. Uh, the, the, the best way that service providers are realizing the benefits of, of SDN today is really what, what we show here as faster automated uh, provisioning of services. And, and with that, that, that uh, you know, faster provision, provisioning has a lot of supplemental benefits as well. The, a primary one being lower costs because you are, you know, improving both network and operational efficiency. And then also the, the open interfaces that are um, and the abstraction capability that, that are, are their core to uh, SDN also enables simpler integration with other, you know, components of the the overall uh, service provider infrastructure, as well as better interoperability with uh, between multi-vendor components, different network elements, different from different vendors, different um, uh, cap pro um, uh, components within the overall virtualization stack. All is simplified uh, via these uh, these open interfaces and use of of different open protocols. So I talked a, a bit about the the uh, uh, benefits of SDN, and, and I also highlighted that you know the, the project originated uh, from the, the Clean Slate project, or uh, the concept originated from the Clean Slate project. That was about 10 years ago, by the way. But let's also talk a little bit about the, the status of SDN today. And, you know, as a as 10 year old technology, uh, uh, you know, I would actually now highlight it as a very mature and robust technology for service pro providers in particular. Uh, there are several, you know, very well-known uh, large and worldwide production deployments uh, from both Sienna and, and many other companies, uh, you know, across the globe. Um, it, it also is being adopted and, and driven by multiple standards groups and open source projects. So I'm highlighting a few here on the slide, and those include Organizations like Onos and uh, Open Daylight, the Linux Foundation, uh, the Open Networking Forum, and there are several others uh, that I would also include in that list, like the Metro Ethernet Forum, like the IETF, that all of which are, are in uh, agreement on the, for the most part, on the, the concepts and how the, the different protocols relate to one another, and, and there's a, a very strong inertia positive inertia behind this movement, and there has been for some time now. Uh, at the same time, and, and probably you know, just as responsible for, for driving that, that maturity of, of SDN, is that the approach has been adopted by pretty much all leading vendors across the, the, the telecom supplier spectrum, you know, including the, the large router vendors, the, uh, you know, what you could consider the Ethernet access and other access vendors, the, um, the transport vendors, all of all of them are embracing uh, uh, SDN in some some way, shape, or form, and are bringing to market different 
products that are based on the concepts. Uh, there are some variations in that in the approach to how they're uh, you know productizing uh, SDN. Some vendors will be uh, or have and, and are creating different SDN controllers for different products within their overall portfolio, different product families, I should say. Um, uh, oftentimes, those are deploy deployed or recommended to be deployed alongside the existing network management systems and element management systems that those vendors have. But in other cases, uh, companies are uh, bringing to market uh, what I would consider SDN-powered network management systems that combine NMS capabilities with the, the concepts that are that are part of SDN, like a, a centralized control plane and open APIs, and that just so happens to be the the um, the approach that we've adopted here uh, at Siena with the Blue Planet product portfolio, um, where we where we have a, a product recently introduced just uh, earlier this year called Blue Planet MCP, which stands for Management Control and Plan that does leverage the concept of SDN to provide uh, you know, centralized control of our uh, uh, of CN's products, but does much more in, in the sense of you know, being beyond a, an SDN controller to incorporate full uh, FCAPS management capabilities as well as integrated online planning to enable you know, what we describe as real-time lifecycle uh, operations of the entire uh, Sienna domain. So, um, you know, good capabilities from Sienna that are that are building on the concepts of SDN. So, you know, I uh, I talked a bit about SDN, and I'll be circling back to talk uh, a little bit about it later, as will Abel. Um, I'll move on now to uh, NFV or network function functions virtualization. So, the the concept of NFV really was created to to address some, uh, you know, a number of issues that are tied to the traditional service delivery model. And um, that traditional model is very related or dependent in, in some ways on the, you know, uh, hardware, the di different types of hardware appliances that are, that are showing on the screen here. And the, the, the situation is that for service providers who are deploying services, they're very much reliant on these customized pieces of hardware that are purpose-built for providing a particular function, and then when you are deploying a service that leverages that function, you have to use one or, in most cases, multiple different pieces of hardware to, to provide that end-to-end -end service. Each of those appliances needs to be physically uh, onboarded and installed on a, on a per-site basis. So that, that model, in many ways, uh, you know, involves a, a lot of operational complexity, and high cost, and and at the end of the day, slow service delivery uh, to your customer, and you know what could, you know, will, will likely uh, be seen as an unhappy customer. So the NFV movement was really created by and for service providers to solve that challenge, and it was introduced in about the uh, late 2012 timeframe, where the idea behind it is that the service providers wanted to leverage the uh, capabilities of the cloud in terms of agility and economics. And, and, and the idea being that instead of using these customized pieces of hardware uh, for each of these functions, let's virtualize those network functions, turn them into software, and run that software as run those software instances on what we call you know, commercial off-the-shelf hardware, and that's uh, commodity data center class uh, servers and storage and, and uh, Ethernet switches inside the data data center, and the idea is that the, the benefit will be that those types of virtualized services can be orchestrated and automated uh, to accelerate the delivery time frame to customers. And again, if I were to to, to roll up, you know, the, the principal benefit of of, of NFV to service providers. Uh, the, that is really all tied to the automated uh, ability to uh, automate the delivery of these virtualized services. Uh, uh, that, of course, if you're delivering services more quickly, you're going to have a, a better customer experience and shorter time for revenue. 
um, and with that improved operational agility. The, the principal element or main component of NFV, or one of the main components of NFV, is, is what I'm showing on the diagram here uh, of an NFV orchestrator. Um, the NFV orchestrator is the, 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 the uh, capability within, within NFV that it will instantiate those virtual network functions in different locations across the network to enable that automated uh, service delivery and the management of those new, the management of the life cycle of those new virtualized services. Um, the, uh, the idea here is that the NFB orchestrator sits uh, above the, 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 the virtualization platform to instantiate those, those VNFs in the, uh, the different locations. Um, uh, the you know, additional business benefits of, of uh, NFB you know, beyond the, the operational agility that comes with that are lower costs and higher profits. So just like I, I provided a, a status update of SDN, which was a, a 10-year-old technology, NFV is now a five-year-old technology. So um, where does it stand today? Uh, what you know, what uh, you know, Sienna and other industry analysts are really um, you know talking about lately is that the, the technology has really matured considerably over the last year or so, very much tied to the to the recent release to. Um, uh, from the uh, Etsy organization that came out late last year. And that combined with the fact that a number of production networks, uh, you know, service provider, production service provider networks are really hitting their stride, are, are really, you know, uh, advancing the technology at a, at a very rapid rate. So some notable ones are, of course, AT&T's Domain 2.0 uh, project, but other NFV leaders and certified leaders like Centrelink and Orange Business Services have some very successful and, and highly visible uh, uh, deployments of NFV. Uh, in addition to that, you know, vendors across the spectrum again are uh, very much embracing NFV, where uh, the, the different hardware uh, appliance leaders are in the process of virtualizing. Those, uh, those appliances and, and turning what was a, a custom piece of hardware into a more, more uh, portable uh, virtual network function. I, I've listed you know, several vendors here, uh, all of which are you know, both manufacturers of VNFs and ones that we've worked with in different customer deployments. And, and you see several you know, industry leading companies there like, like Juniper and Palo Alto, Silver Peak and Versa and others that are very much invested in this, this concept of, of NFV. Uh, other vendors focus on different combinations of orchestration and integration of those uh, of, of NFV networks. And, and a, 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 another trend that is common across the industry is not just building out the virtual network functions, but taking traditional uh, hardware appliances and making them more optimized for NFV deployments. And, and Sienna uh, falls in the camp, uh, I guess, of both those, those two, uh, two you know, second and third camps where our Blue Planet product is widely deployed as an NFV orchestrator. And then also Sienna produces what you can think of as an NFV optimized CPE, essentially a product that combines a, an Ethernet switch, an Ethernet, carry Ethernet access switch, with an onboard server so that it can also serve as a host for different VNFs, you know, or combinations of VNFs that be, can be chained at the customer premises. So I've now, you know, highlighted both SDN and NFV, so let's, let's talk about how they, they work together. And, and the, the fact is that they do uh, work best when they are deployed together, and that, which is the trend we've seen with um, you know a number of our operator customers. So, um, you know, starting from the from the the left to the right here, talk about some of the, the high level combined benefits. Well, the first of these is that it it has a uh, potential to to really increase revenue, and, and that's through the creation of new innovative services like on demand network as a service that are very much um, you know, in demand from uh, the different uh, customer bases, you know, enterprises, 
um, other uh, you know, federal government entities, et cetera, are all clamoring for this concept of an on-demand network as a service. You know, an additional you know, big benefit to service providers is the, the reduced OPEX that comes with that. Um, and that's, you know, that reduced OPEX comes through the, the use of automation that is you know, cap a capability within both NFV and SEN, as well as the ability to, to leverage commodity hardware inside the data center you know, aligned with uh, aligned with NFV. Uh, I you know I, I highlighted also how uh, you know both NFV and SDN equate to faster service delivery or, or what people call uh, service velocity, and 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 that comes with a number of benefits. Uh, but the biggest one, in my view, is that improved customer experience that comes with that. You know, you're uh, you're undoubtedly going to have a happier customer if you can deliver a service to them in in a matter of you know you know, minutes or hours or days perhaps instead of, you know, the, the traditional uh, service delivery cycle they can take upwards of, a, upwards of a month to a month and a half. Um, the, the use of open interfaces, with, again, with, with, within both uh, NFV and SDN results in a reduced amount of vendor lock-in. Uh, you're, you're now able to change out vendors a little bit more seamlessly, which, uh, which certainly uh, bodes well for, for operators. And then the, the, the change that comes along with SCN and NFV and transforming with this, the, with the, through the use of those technologies also can be described as giving better operational agility so that um, operators can not just deploy services more quickly, but also create them um, more quickly and in a more collaborative fashion. And so, um, you know, all of those combined benefits of SCN and NFV really address a number of, of issues, and the transformation that comes with that address a number of challenges that are facing service providers today. So now let's talk a little bit about virtual network building blocks and how, and how you know, so I, I talked about that these, uh, pro these capabilities work best when they're combined, but, but how do you combine them, right? Okay, let that build out a little bit. So, you know, I, 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 again, I talked about SCN and NFV and, and how they're complementary. <clears throat> they also have some other similar uh, capabilities. So in, in the case of SDN and the different, different approaches the different, that vendors take related to SDN, you know, they provide a, a control capability, an SDN controller, that will sit on top of an infrastructure layer. And in the case of SDN, that's a, those are different physical domains that the SDN controller sits on top of. And then similarly, you know, in the case of NFV, there's the NFV orchestrator that will sit on top of that virtual domain and, and NFV cloud to help, you know, orchestrate uh, and, and automate the delivery of these new virtualized services. Um, of course, virtualization is not, uh, you know, necessarily 100% uh, aligned with just NFV. Uh, service providers are increasingly wanting to include other cloud-based resources as part of their overall services mix. So, so another you know virtual domain that is relevant to the to the to the concept of you know service delivery and service automation for providers are different public and, and private clouds. Um, you know, but but all of those have a very similar dynamic where there's a there's a control element that will sit on top of the the, the infrastructure element, um, but at the same time. All of these are still, or can still be considered different independent silos. How do you get these different capabilities or domains, physical and virtual domains, to work together? Well, that is where orchestration comes into play. And, and in fact, the, the, the modern information model and the modern you know, management hierarchy of how service providers accomplish this combination of, uh, of services, that, or rather the automation of these services that, in, that, uh, that span across multiple domains is, le is used um, uh, via orchestration. So this new orchestration layer will, will sit on top of these different uh, individual domains and enable that end-to-end -end automation by communicating with, these th with the, the infrastructure layers through these different control elements and, and pulling it all together like uh, you know, what you consider as a, a glue or perhaps, I guess, the name orchestration is also indicative of that. It's, it's this centralized control element to enable this end-to-end -end autom service automation. 
a very uh, related uh, concept to, to service orchestration is, is the concept of DevOps. And what we're seeing again uh, with many of our customers is they realize for these transformation projects to be successful, they need a very close alignment between the, the network and operations or IT teams to accelerate that transformation. And that's where DevOps comes into play, where these groups collaborate, again, not just to deploy the services more quickly, but also to, to create them collabor collaboratively and, 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 and leverage a lot of these you know, transformation capabilities in not just the network side, but in the back office. And DevOps is key to that, uh, that evolution. Yeah, and then finally, just to, to, to highlight the, the mapping again of the, the Blue Planet uh, product suite into that, that overall transformation robot, our, our Blue Planet MDSO is in fact um, you know, uh, sitting at that orchestration layer where it ties together these different pieces to enable that end-to-end, that -end, what we call intelligent automation capability. Uh, we call that MDSO, which stands for uh, Multi-Domain Service Orchestration. And along with that, we have a, a suite of DevOps tools. We call it the, the DevOps Toolkit that, that simplify that, the onboarding of uh, different resources as well as the you know, the end-to-end, -end, um, you know, deployment of these services, uh, excuse me, of these, these new virtualized services, sometimes supported by services that we also uh, provide, professional services, managed services, et cetera, from Siena. And then within the, the control layer, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, our, our uh, MCP product is, is what we uh, talk about as our SDN-based domain controller for the, for the Siena hardware. And then uh, the, the Blue Planet orchestration uh, platform can also be uh, purposed just for an NFV domain for customers that are, that are uh, deploying NFV services. The, the whole idea here is that, that Blue Planet has been, has been created as a platform to enable this both operational network transformation to happen at the same time. And with that, um, you know, I'm going to hand over to Abel in just a, a few moments here, but I'm also going to talk about, uh, we're, first we're going to, to uh, you know, poll the audience. We have a number of people here attending today. We're going to poll the audience quickly uh, with, uh, with some questions. So uh, I'll hand it over to you, Joanna, for the, for the poll. Sure. Thanks, Kevin. Um, yeah, so we, we like to get some feedback uh, from our audience, kind of get a reading from you where you're at. Um, so we're curious today, you know, what, what's the primary reason for your interest in, in SDN and NFE? Um, perhaps maybe you're just looking to understand more about the technologies and, you know, how they, how they might impact your company. Or um, maybe it's, it's looking to find the path to success for a future deployment. Um, or maybe you're, in, you're interested on behalf of uh, some solutions you're providing for your customers. Um, or maybe just in general you want to get a, a better understanding of some, some of Sienna's solutions specifically. Um, so go ahead and, and choose your option there, and you can hit that uh, Submit button. Um, I see that uh, some folks are, are doing that now. I'm going to give everybody a few more seconds to, to make their selection. and. Uh, and then we'll uh, take take a look and sort of see where everybody's at. It's nice to get a feel for uh, where your audience's head's at, and uh, then we'll uh, continue on with the presentation. Um, so it looks like perhaps uh, the they're kind of falling off now. So I think uh, the good point we'll uh, we'll move on. Let's see let's see where everybody's at here. Here we go, Kevin and Abel. That's kind of where we ended up. Uh, what do what you yeah, thought? That, maybe where you thought everybody was at? Yeah, yeah. Just seeing the uh, number of people that I can I can tell are, are online here this morning or this afternoon. Um, you know, clearly a lot of interest in the technology, uh, the technologies rather, and and how they might impact my company in the future. So uh, I'm not surprised um, in, in any way. Uh, you know, I'm happy to see, of course, that. You know, a, a good number of folks are just wanted to have a better understanding of, you know, our perspective, Sienna's perspective, of, uh, you know, you know what we uh, would, uh, you know, uh, align with our uh, Blue Planet portfolio. Uh, what about you, Abel? What are your thoughts? 
Yeah, actually, um, I think the uh, the first one, I mean, it's natural that this is a presentation about SDN and NFV and kind of an, um, an essentials type of presentation about the technology, so it's natural to see people looking to understand more about these. But I'm actually pleasantly surprised by the fact that people want to understand more about Sienna and our perspective on SDN and NFV. And so I think that's actually a really nice segue into the next part of the presentation where we'll actually go into some of um, SDN and NFV solutions and specifically some use cases for which uh, we've actually deployed these technologies in production networks. So with that, let me, uh, let me move the slide forward and uh, start talking about some actual customer success stories and, and applications where um, we've applied both SDN and NFV in, uh, in customer networks to, to solve um, significant challenges that they have with their businesses. So this first slide is a customer use case. Now, Windstream is a, um, is a provider in the United States. They're a national provider. They're the fourth largest provider in the U.S. Um, they have a nationwide optical network. And they have this. They had this uh, challenge basically, where um, they wanted to uh, improve the velocity with which they were able to deliver deliver one, ten, and hundred gig Ethernet services or wavelength services, and really improve the competitiveness versus other providers that that uh, that they faced in in the in the U.S. And so what they did is they deployed a Blue Planet solution, an MDSO solution. So let me just take a minute and explain MDSO. If you look at the diagram, this uh, diagram shows a network that has a metro network with Sienna equipment controlled by a one control or domain controller for Sienna. That's, uh, uh, that domain controller is a piece of software called One Control. They had a long haul network that was provided by another, uh, another vendor. Um, we uh, chose not to name that vendor in this particular slide, but that vendor has an, um, a network elements that are controlled through an open daylight based uh, SDN controller. And there's a third component of the network, which is uh, um, uh, Sienna Z series equipment that's currently operated or controlled by um, a domain controller called Planet Operate. So here we have three different domains, a one control domain, an open daylight domain, and a, a planet operate domain. And Blue Planet is able to automate the layer one service provisioning across this multi-vendor, multi-domain transport network. So a metro network, a long haul network, and another metro network. And what's interesting about this particular solution is that when we approach this project, we, uh, we implemented a fully agile process, you know, the, the agile process that includes iterative um, development, uh, close customer collaboration, fine grain individual interactions, focus on, you know, uh, developing working software and, and running through uh, scrums and development cycles um, very quickly. And we were able to bring this entire project from concept, like, let's go out and do this, to their production network in about three months. And so uh, very rapid engagement, very fast development cycle. And what Windstream actually gets out of this is, um, is now an environment where they can turn up services very quickly across this metro, long haul metro network. It's a multi-vendor network, as I mentioned. They also get the, uh, they get the ability to, um, to having run through this development cycle, they have the ability now to engage in other uh, Agile-based software development cycles to implement other things in their network. So by having an Agile DevOps approach and going through it um, uh, with us to develop this first application, they now have the foundation for de delivering programmable services in other areas of their network. And uh, as I mentioned, I mean, they went from concept to production in, in three months. And this is really a small fraction of the time that it takes typically to run through other types of projects that, as they've had experience with in their network. So I'm gonna to move to another example. And this example is uh, from a customer, CenturyLink. And this is actually a proof of concept that we built together with CenturyLink 
and uh, some of the partner logos that you see uh, at the bottom of this uh, in the diagram. Um, the idea was that we built this proof of concept to demonstrate that we could automate carrier Ethernet service provisioning um, in a completely programmable uh, service delivery environment. And the idea was to collaborate with the MEF and use MEF-based uh, pre-standard, but uh, soon to be standard APIs to actually facilitate the provisioning across a multi-vendor network. Of course, carrier Ethernet services are high-performance, high-reliability um, Ethernet connectivity services. Uh, carrier Ethernet today, if we look at the global market, is about a $60 billion market for carrier Ethernet services. So being able to turn up services quickly and easily in a standard base or through standard based APIs is a is a really powerful uh, enabler to, to accelerate the deployment of more carrier Ethernet services. And one of the things that was actually unique about this specific example is that in this case, it was not only turning up the connectivity service, but it was also turning up the service OAM, the um, Y.1731 performance metric or performance monitoring collection uh, um, parameters that allow us to, to collect the data to run our SLA assurance for the carrier Ethernet services. So in this particular solution, um, what we did is, again, this is a MDSO or multi-domain service orchestration uh, a application where we had CNA equipment and RAD equipment at the customer premises or at the edges of the network, and we ran through um, a Metro and Core network that was built out of Cisco and Alcatel equipment. And so this, again, multi, multi-vendor, multiple different controllers or domain controllers for each of the Sienna, Cisco, Alcatel, and RAD domains and integrated through a single multi-domain service orchestration platform. So what they, what CenturyLink actually got out of this activity um, was a simple one-touch service provisioning activity. In other words, one user, one click could provision the service end-to-end -end across this multi-vendor network, but also at the same time as provisioning the service, set up the service OAM to allow for uh, SLA performance monitoring and for SLA assurance. And what they also saw was, again, uh, um, an open, highly reliable, scalable microservices platform so in the case of CenturyLink, you can imagine they're a tier one provider in the United States. They turn up literally um, order of thousands, uh, many thousands of these services every month. And so they, they needed a highly open and scalable platform, which allows them to deploy across their um, national network. And the other thing that we, uh, we achieved in, in this particular activity is that this was a collaborative community-based uh, development activity where um, the vendors who participated together work together in a collaborative way to establish a partnership for building these multi-domain service uh, orchestrated applications. And so um, it's a direction that we think that uh, we see the industry going in where, um, yes, we do have maybe hardware platforms that compete, but on a level of software, that the software pieces need to come together and allow us to provision, you know, I mentioned one user, one click, but to be able to provision services simply across this uh, this end-to-end -end environment. Um, one more example, and this is Orange Business Systems, and Orange is actually a very interesting case because if you look at uh, Vertical Systems, which uh, publishes or does research and publishes a global Ethernet leader scoreboard. Orange is actually the number one global Ethernet service provider in terms of Ethernet port count in the world today. I mean, Orange is ahead in that list, ahead of um, uh, notable other providers like AT&T, Verizon, and, um, and NTT. But the thing about Orange in this case is they had a specific challenge. So they're delivering uh, MPLS VPN services today, and those are good services, high performance MPLS-based connectivity services. But what they really wanted to do was provide a more agile environment 
that allowed them to address actually a new market, to go after small and medium enterprise uh, customers at a cost point to Orange that was significantly lower so that they could meet the needs of these customers without having to roll trucks and drive out and install equipment and provision on site. So they wanted to adopt an approach based on NFV specifically to enable that market. And so they used the Blue Planet solution. In this case, they started out focusing on NFV orchestration, NFEO, NFV orchestration, to actually automate the configuration of different VNFs that they deploy in their network. And so you'll see some logos, Fortinet and Juniper. And so they were really talking about deploying initially firewall and routing services. But these services are all part of um, a production network called EasyGo that's uh, in their network. And actually, I've seen published reports talking about how EasyGo is going to expand this year in 2017 to reach 75 countries across their network. So it's moved from um, a simple NFV orchestration opportunity to now providing this dynamic um, dynamic services to enterprise customers across uh, quite a large global network, in fact. And so um, EasyGo, in this first iteration of deploying firewalls and routers, is part of, um, or a first step in this provider strategy of actually expanding the portfolio and introducing a full portfolio of network as a service. And so um, a key enabler of that is to deploy this generic orchestration or this general purpose orchestration platform that gives them the ability to run DevOps, to integrate or add on and onboard new VNFs and increase the service portfolio over time. Okay. So um, we've gone through a couple customer examples and uh, I've seen some really good Q&A come across. So before I, we get to the Q&A, let me just run through a couple more slides in, in summary, and, uh, and then we can, we can answer some of the, the really good questions that have come across. So um, I guess, in a way, uh, my summary really is, uh, is starting with a question. So why do you want to start now? You know, SDN, NFE, and orchestration, um, they are somewhat newer technologies, but why really start now? Um, and uh, the answer starts with, SDN, NFE, and orchestration can deliver immediate benefits. They can, uh, the combination of SDN, NFE, and orchestration can help you simplify and automate your network and network operations today. And by simplifying and automating your network, you achieve benefits of speed, uh, faster turn up, um, you uh, achieve um, the ability to, to innovate, and with accuracy, you also achieve benefits because with accuracy, you turn up things more quickly because they don't have errors and more predictably because when you have errors, you have to go back and fix things. So um, simplifying and automating itself brings a lot of benefits. And ultimately, what you get with SDN and NFV is the ability to turn up customers on demand and move processes that used to take months to turn customers up to something that can be turned up in minutes. And when something can be turned up in minutes, then these kinds of services can be enabled on a self-service type of basis. The next benefit or the next reason for why start now is that the architectures and the progression of software, things are now more open. The architectures are, are open. You have the ability to come in and take control of your network and actually onboard devices and technologies as needed. So, for example, um, in the case of Orange, where they're onboarding firewalls and, and routers to start with, if the next activity involved a different technology or a different type of uh, virtual network function, for example, they wanted to move into the mobile space or the content delivery space, they could onboard different devices and different technologies and bring them on board in an open environment. So, today, the architectures and the systems are more open, which allow you to move in the direction that's appropriate for you. And then the third element of why starting now, it has to do with innovation. And so if we look at service innovation, we now have the ability to introduce 
new services more quickly and easily. And by introducing new services, it gives us access to new sources, new sources of revenue. And what I mean by accelerating innovation is we've taken this service innovation process now because it's software controlled and because you have more control over your own network, we've taken this process, which used to take months or in some cases even years, down to a matter of weeks. And so we've had examples working with customers and actually achieving this as well. So the bottom line is that we think that now is a great time to start. Um, definitely think big and think about, you know, how we can transform networks and really transform the businesses that we operate. But recognize that SDN and NFV and orchestration, this is, in some sense, it's a journey. It's a process. And to be successful in this process, you really want to start small. Find a project where you can leverage the strength of the technologies, SDN, NFV, and orchestration, where these technologies really apply and provide significant benefit. Build on that particular application first, have success, and then continue that success by building success on top of success. And with that, we've seen success from uh, a number of different uh, customers of, of ours. We think that um, although it maybe it's not as easy as the easy button makes it appear, that um, it is something that is uh, definitely doable and the process for achieving success is, um, is straightforward. And uh, we think that, um, you know, the time is now and, and, uh, and you can go ahead and start and be successful today. So um, with that, in summary, you know, uh, if we talk about SDN, SDN is all about providing a more responsive and highly programmable uh, networking environment that includes physical and actually virtual networking uh, equipment. NFV enables virtualized services by allowing functionality to be virtualized that functionality can be delivered much faster and more efficiently in the networks that we have today. Now, orchestration is really the glue that combines the SDN and NFV together to bring in the automation end-to-end -end, uh, for service delivery. So I think about orchestration in terms of one user, one, one click, being able to fulfill and assure the services end-to-end -end across um, across the different networking domains. Think, think big, but start small. SDN and NFE technologies are mature and they're well deployed today, but thinking big and starting small are really the keys to, uh, to achieving um, success um, with this technology. And then finally, uh, one thing that, that we've seen is that by aligning uh, by bringing SDN and software-based uh, environment into your networking and operations, aligning the network and IT teams really helps to accelerate the transformation in your networks. So um, just wanted to, to highlight again a, a diagram that, that Kevin showed, which um, shows in blue some of the, the components that are provided by Blue Planet as part of this um, ecosystem or solution for SDN, NFV, and orchestration, and highlight again the, uh, the ebook that, that uh, we put out there um, talking about NFV, SDN, um, and uh, really as, a, as an essential guide for service providers. So with that, I think I'll um, wrap up and uh, maybe um, go to Q&A. Uh, Kevin, do you have some... Yeah. Have you been looking at the questions and maybe have some questions you want to start answering? Well, and I, I can jump in real quick and just okay. give everybody a quick reminder of uh, how to submit questions. Um, so the Q&A window is right there on the left-hand side of your screen. You can type your question in there and hit the Submit button. Um, again, all questions are private, and only uh, our panel of experts here on the back end will see them. Um, and once again, if we don't get to your question now, we've got a lot of folks on the line and a lot of questions coming in. Um, we'll be sure to follow up with you after the event. Um, and as Abel had said, we do have quite a few coming in here. Um, so maybe we can just jump in and get started. Uh, Kevin, do you, do you want to jump in first? 
Yeah, I will, Joanna. Thank you. And, um, and like you mentioned, we have gotten a number of questions, uh, and, and many of them are really, really good. So um, I'm going to jump to it, to it first, and then Abel and I will probably just take turns answering different questions as they come in and, and, uh, and others. So, um, so the first question is from uh, Chris at AT&T. And he's asking, can we relate Blue Planet, the orchestrator, uh, uh, to the, you know, what's referred to as the ANO, uh, SC MANO architecture model or reference architecture? Yeah, I, I didn't in include in that, so that overlay that we often do. Um, but Chris and others, um, you know, Blue Planet uh, fulfills the, if, you, if you've seen that, uh, or that uh, reference architecture, it shows the different uh, components of the, uh, the, SC, uh, the NFE stack including the virtualized infrastructure, uh, the, the, the virtualized infrastructure manager, the, the VNS, and what they call the, the MANO component. Um, we are the NFV orchestrator in, in, that, um, in that reference architecture, and then have an optional capability to include VNFM functions in the situation or, or I mean, when working with vendors that don't necessarily have their own VNFMs. So that's something that we can, that's ex an extensive part of Blue Planet, we can uh, you know, be programmed uh, or extended to include some VNFM functionality. But for the most part, we provide the, the NFV orchestrator capability. And, and on top of that, I would add that, um, you know, that that orchestration capability isn't just limited to uh, VNFs and, and, and through VIMs. We also extend that with the MDSO concept, multi-domain service orchestration, to enable you know, um, orchestration of, of any kind of, you know, physical or virtual resource through a, a domain controller of any sort, a, a legacy NMS, you know, a, um, uh, you know, a, a VMware environment for another virtualized uh, capability, et cetera. So that's, that's the answer to that question. Uh, Abel, do you want to take the next one? Yeah, so, um, Kevin, I'll just add one uh, quick comment to, to your response. I think that was really good. Um, when I think of Blue Planet, what we actually have with the MDSO capability or the orchestration capability is a general purpose orchestrator. In other words, we can sequence out a bunch of steps, we can build objects, we can have relationships between objects and describe dependencies and things like that. And so when we take that orchestration engine and deploy it in an NFV orchestration opportunity, yeah, we can provide the full MANO functionality specified, you know, to be consistent with Etsy, and that's great. But we also want to think about orchestration in terms of what's ultimately a network operator trying to do. They're trying to deliver a service end to end. And so if there's an opportunity to connect a virtualized function controlled by Nano into a cloud or across a wide area network, we have a play there too in, in the ability to orchestrate multiple different domains, the wide area network, the NFV domain, and the cloud. And we can bring it all together with one of those pieces, the NFV piece, having a MANO component inside. So, um, yeah, I think that's a, that's a great question. So, um, yeah, okay. So let me move to this uh, next question, which I think is kind of interesting, and it shows actually that this audience is actually uh, more advanced than, than maybe we were originally thinking, Kevin. Um, and the question is, uh, is uh, can you discuss how carrier-to-carrier -carrier interconnection uh, is achievable with SDN? And so um, I might uh, just uh, point out that uh, we are working with organizations like TM Forum and MEF talking about um, um, carrier, you know, higher level issues. And the MEF has projects going on to address how carriers interconnect with each other, how to do quoting, how to do ordering, and what kinds of APIs are necessary for controlling networks. But on the other hand, as these standards are coming out and as these standards are maturing, if we think about this orchestration problem, orchestration is really about controlling underlying networking type of resources or objects. And if we model one entire, uh, we can model a single device as a resource, we can model an, uh, an, a network, say autonomous system as a network, or we can even model a provider network as as a, as, a, as a programmable resource. And at each of these levels, that resource is actually described in our parlance by uh, something we call a resource adapter in, or an RA. But that resource adapter allows us to describe that underlying object, what that object can do, 
and the API or the interface for talking to that specific object. And so if we took, and we've done this in, in, uh, in networks in the past, and we've taken, say, a wholesale network with an API and just built an adapter to that network, we can consume that as a resource as we do any other resource that we orchestrate. So a bit of a long answer to how would we uh, orchestrate across a carrier-to-carrier -carrier network is we could build an adapter that allows us to model an underlying carrier network as a resource, say a resource that delivers, for example, IP uh, uh, VPN services or a resource that delivers um, carrier Ethernet e-access services, and we could consume, or even optical services, optical wave services, and we could consume that um, third-party carrier network as a resource and just add that to our family of programmable resources that we can orchestrate, and then we can very naturally orchestrate carrier-to-carrier -carrier interconnection even ahead of there being a standard. And by the way, when there is a standard and there are networks that conform to the standard, we'll have a standard-based resource adapter that adapts to those, those standard-based networks, and it'll be very easy to bring it all together and do um, carrier-to-carrier type of orchestration. So great question. Yeah, yeah, good, good input. And I, I think, you know, the MEP is doing a lot of, a lot of, uh, both MEP and the TM form are doing a lot of work in, uh, in, in developing that standard. So thanks, Abel. Um, okay, another uh, good question here. And I agree with you also, Abel, that we're getting some, some good, uh, good questions, uh, you know, showing that some folks really know uh, quite a bit about SCN and NFE. So uh, Fabian from Swisscom is asking here, uh, do you see the, the use of two different SCNs, one inside the data, data center, for uh, you know, high infrastructure as a service capability, and the second one as SCN in the WAN. And as I, I would agree with that because um, there are distinctly two different flavors of SCN um, and, and different controllers for optimized for those two different environments. Again, inside the data center and then between data centers or, or the, the WAN. Um, whereas uh, orchestration and, and service orchestration actually can help pull that together. So yes, there are. Definitely two distinct, um, you know, variations of SDN, but orchestration really helps pull them together to enable, uh, you know, an infrastructure of a service capability to be, you know, consumed as a, as a resource within a, uh, an, a, a wide area network service. So, a uh, good question, Fabian. Abel, Abel, you want yeah, to take one? Yeah, so let me just add one comment to that, uh, Kevin, because I was recently at the NFE World Congress meeting, um, which was in San Jose, and uh, there's a gentleman from British Telecom that gave a presentation that was really quite excellent. And what he said in that presentation is that um, for, for a long time, many months, uh, BT actually really tried to fit this orchestration or SDN control problem into two layers. And what he re realized is that this isn't a two-layer problem. This is a hierarchical. In, in some sense, it's almost a recursive problem. So if we start with that example of the last question where we, we had a multi-carrier network, well, there's a level of orchestration that's at the carrier level, right? And then you want to orchestrate connectivity service, say, um, say uh, an IPVPN across that network. Well, then there's a level of orchestration inside of that carrier's network where Maybe you're doing a level of uh, orchestration across a metro, a core domain, and another metro domain. And inside of that, there may be a level of orchestration where some of the functionality is provided by, um, I don't know, pick your favorite vendor, Cisco or Sienna or um, another vendor. Some of it's provided by physical. Some of it's provided by virtual function. So if you break down problems, there are many levels of orchestration, and it's, it's not necessarily only two. So, yeah, there's clearly partitioning between the wide area network and the cloud, but inside the wide area network, there could be multiple layers of orchestration as, as also possible within the cloud. So yes, we do see it, see those two, but we also see the possibility for there being more. Um, so great question. Uh, here's a, a, another question. Um, this question is, how can a bunch of COT servers, uh, referring, uh, I suppose, to uh, NFE, how can a bunch of COT servers deliver the same capacity, throughput, and performance as ASIC-based, purpose-built hardware, such as a router? And I think that's a great question because it's one of the myths 
in the industry? And quite honestly, the answer is that it can't. You know, I mean, um, there's a lot of software that runs in routers today, and you can take that software off of the router and run it in a cloud-based compute platform. You get some benefits from doing that because the cloud-based platform can scale essentially infinitely. The compute that you're running on is a lot cheaper. We get the agility and uh, flexibility that, that Kevin mentioned in, in his part of the presentation. But what we're missing is some of the, the high throughput, high performance. So just to, to make the example concrete, if we're talking about a routing platform that sits at the customer premise, we're talking about maybe gigabyte, gigabits per second or 10 gig per second, that's fine. If we're talking about maybe, say, um, a video head-end router, again, where we're processing maybe 10 gigs or a few sets of 10 gig uh, types of parameters, fine, we can virtualize that. But if we're talking about a core router where we're talking about many terabits per second of data, that's not realistic to expect a virtualized platform to deliver that performance today. Now, having said that, you know, if we look at the performance curves and the improvement in the uh, generic compute infrastructure, that's improving at a rapid rate. And we might see a time where, you know, well, we definitely are seeing that the performance of VNFs improve, but um, ASICs will always be uh, a virtualized infrastructure. And it's a matter, again, of finding the um, applications that are appropriate for uh, to take advantage of the benefits that the te technology actually brings to you. Yeah, so that's a great, great question. Point. And, and just like a lot of things, Abel, you know, there, there's always there's a trade-off, right? I mean, you got to find the right balance of you know how much uh, do you value uh, agility and openness uh, versus you know pure performance, and there's there's a trade-off there. But but in my in my uh, in my uh, uh, opinion. Uh, the the agility wins because that's the the big biggest challenge facing service providers today. So uh, so we're we're now three minutes over the hour, but I'm going to try to take one quick question and then we'll then we'll close out today. And and by the way, still be happy to answer all these questions uh, independently via email, um, either through a, a blog that I put out or uh, through one on one follow ups. But last question I take here and uh, and then we'll close. What applications are best suited to SCN or NFV? And um, I think that the three success stories or case studies that, that Able showcased there really show the three top ones that we're seeing in terms of getting traction. And in, in, in my uh, view, in the, from an SDN perspective, you showcase the automation of the transport network layers, both in the case of, of uh, Windstream uh, automating their optical layer and, and CenturyLink automating their Ethernet layer. That, clearly is getting uh, what we see is the applications probably getting the most traction. Um, and then also in the NFV world, uh, virtual CPE, you know, business services in particular, uh, virtual CPD, CPE, and that's uh, very much the, uh, the orange use, orange business services use case, I see is also getting the most traction. Um, Abel, open up to you to, to an additional comment on that and then maybe close. Yeah, uh, I think that's great. We've seen a, a lot of deployments along those three lines, which is why we picked those uh, three specific use cases to talk about. But I might also add that uh, we see a lot of activity with the uh, coming together, of, you know, hybrid IT and the coming together of the wide area network and cloud. And so the ability to deliver enterprise to cloud, anything as a service, software, compute, uh, storage as a service, um, also, emerging applications, enterprise applications around SD-WAN. We didn't have a chance to really talk about SD-WAN today, but um, just a, a, a whole bunch. And again, it's like choose the applications that make sense for your particular business. Um, there are a lot of different applications that, that can apply to SDN, um, you know, content delivery. I mentioned mobile networking, a whole bunch of different applications that, that you know, we've had some ex uh, experience working on and, and have deployed, but only have time to talk about a few today. So, um, yeah, so so I guess that's it. Um, maybe let's throw it back to uh, Joanna and we'll uh, try and wrap up. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you so much, Abel, and thank you so much, Kevin. And a, a big thank you to everybody who joined us today. Um, hope you learned a lot. Uh, so this now officially concludes our webinar, The Essentials of NFV and SDN for Carriers and Service Providers. Um, feel free to download any of the uh, 
materials that we've made made available to you in that bottom console there. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, also please take a moment to complete our post-event survey. Um, it'll be pushed to you once the event is complete. Uh, your feedback is very important to us to make sure that we deliver the most informative webinars that we can. So thanks so much again, and hope everybody has a great day.